To be on the Seine at any time is a bucket list moment. But to travel it with this captain on this boat following this particular route, that's pretty extraordinary. I like Paris as a Parisian, but Paris on the Seine River, it's just amazing. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's such a good event to make it. So I'm really proud of it. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my job and I'm proud of, of France also, yeah. This is Captain Benjamin Benolier. And that job? Carrying some of the athletes down the river for the opening ceremony in open boats like his past Notre Dame, the Louvre, Paris's treasures, all the way to the Eiffel Tower and the awaiting presidents and prime ministers and global dignitaries. A plan that is possibly the most complicated part of hosting these Olympic Games. In all these places, all these balconies. Yeah. All these places uh, overlooking. Yeah, I think it's going to be full of people. Paris is taking a chance and promising something that's never been tried before. As beautiful as this all is, take a moment to consider how ambitious this is security-wise, how risky it is. A six-kilometer stretch of water and somehow French authorities have to keep everyone safe past all the buildings with windows and rooftops and parks and bridges overlooking as the athletes make their way down the set. Now imagine looking at all this from the perspective of a security expert, Matthew Zagroski. Bonjour. We asked him to join us on this tour to see what stood out for him. It's a lot. What's going through my head is that you have those decks along the river that are very narrow, mm -hmm. and there's going to be about 100,000 people over there, 200,000 on, you know, on the upper decks. It's a never seen before event. And for the city of Paris and especially its, its police, this is going to be a very, very stressful day. Uh, because you will have 35,000 uh, law enforcement mobilized, mm -hmm. uh, the whole world uh, watching, and really something unprecedented. It's uh, 160 boats exactly, I think, 10,000 athletes. How do you protect an athlete on a vessel like this? Yeah, it's, um, uh, uh, it's a form of gambling. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. uh, of course, it's, it's a risk. And sure, they can be a sniper, they can be someone throwing something at, uh, at athletes. Yeah. Um, but here, it's really the work of intelligence services. If on that specific day, someone is ready to commit something, there might be some damage. Get to attackers before they strike. The dark urgency of that so terribly clear after the attempted assassination of former President Trump by a rooftop sniper. But make no mistake, there were worries well before that. ISIS is reportedly again trying to sow fear, promising horror at the Olympics. French intelligence services say they've already interrupted two terror plots, and a French soldier was stabbed at a train station. Counter-terror drills have been underway for months, mock hostage takings and so much worse. Most of that happening out of sight of the public. But what Parisians are seeing more of are the seemingly endless barriers and evolving rules for who goes where and when. It's already frustrating. For the anxious, some words about trust from three-time Olympic champion and the head of the Paris Organizing Committee, Tony Estanguet. We trust the authorities that they are able to deliver this kind of moment in total security because the principle is security's number one priority. And from this security, we built all the rest. He knows that depending on security concerns, plans can change, including for the opening ceremony. We are able to uh, reduce a little bit the number of people in certain zones and making sure that, again, the athletes will be in good conditions. How much time do you need to trigger Plan B, though? I mean, can you do it within a day? Can you do it within hours? The idea is definitely to adapt the, uh, the opening ceremony till the last minute and, and making sure that it will be uh, in the best conditions. We, we, we don't want to play with, with security, so definitely mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's, uh, it's to make sure that everyone will be in perfect conditions 
to enjoy uh, this, this moment. The dream has a price, and there is no margin for error on safety. The numbers are dizzying. As many as 45,000 police deployed, 18,000 members of the military, 40,000 barriers, and 40 countries asked to help provide security. But barriers need people watching them, checking bags and tickets and accreditation. And those like Paul Duval doing the training have been concerned for a while they don't have enough people to do the work. We were a profession already stressed by shortages before the Olympics. Now, according to the latest figures, we're still going to be 8,000 short. Having said that, a lot has been done in terms of training. Will we have the numbers? Unfortunately, we won't know until the last minute. New recruit Nolwen Elunga seems to know exactly what she's signing up for. You're well aware of the risks. I mean, in my mind, there are terror attacks that have happened in this country recently. You know the ones, in 2015. I know that I'm putting myself at risk by doing this job but I still think it's important. And my mission is to protect our citizens above all. The vetting required, the training, it's all making it harder to hire and they're running out of time. In addition to all those involved with the Olympics, 15 million tourists are on their way. No one in France takes this lightly or is naive about the scale of this challenge. Captain Benoliel certainly isn't. Did you think at the time when they made the pitch that they were taking a risk? I think, uh, yeah, they, they take the risk, uh, even, uh, yeah, it's a big risk, but I mean, we're not doing great things without risks. So they press on with plan A and wait for the games to begin. <laughs>